Hi, my name is Randy with My Air Cannons. We use a lot of irrigation valves for firing our air cannons. But something a lot of people seem to have trouble with is disabling flow control. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I made this video to show you how to get rid of or disable flow control on irrigation valves when you're using it for an air cannon. Let's get started. We're going to be doing a brand called K Rain. This is a US company producing these valves. I'd like to show you a few features of this irrigation valve. This particular one's got an angled solenoid. The reason the manufacturers angled them is to allow a higher flow rate through the valve. It has a directional arrow here for direction of flow. So your air reservoir would go on this side over here and it would flow through in this direction. That's true with water as well. The other feature I'd like to show you, this particular manufacturer put a bleeder screw on the top you back that off to bleed water out at that point. It's a good troubleshooting technique for air and for water. Lastly is this knurled knob on top. That's actually our flow control knob. Flow control sets or adjusts the right amount of flow through a valve to a sprinkler system. We don't want that. We want a full flow for an air cannon. So there's uh, a directional arrow here with off written on it and we're going to rotate the knurled knob in the same direction. That's going to turn off our flow control. It's pretty basic. We were given an extra knob, or a knob I should say. Fits over top. Just rotate it till it stops, then back it off a little bit. The reason we back it off, because when you turn it all the way down, it'll hold the valve open. It'll actually hold the valve open. You want to back it off a little bit, and then of course test it, make sure it doesn't leak. You want to adjust it just before it leaks. A better way to do it is to remove the top and remove the flow control components, which we're going to do next. I'm using a, uh, it's actually a DeWalt screwdriver, power screwdriver. To remove the screws, never, never put them in with a power screwdriver. You'll destroy the housing. Removing them is no problem though. So it's got a number of screws, you're going to pull them out. water in the valves when the company tests it. And that's what the internal part of an irrigation valve looks like with the spring. I'd like to show you some other parts of the valve as long as we have it apart now. The spring simply returns the diaphragm back to the closed position after you uh, turn it on with uh, power or voltage. Remove the spring. Remove the plunger assembly, just have a quick look in there and I'll show you something else. The reason this valve is so good, I showed you uh, on the angle before, is this. Straight through flow rate when the valve is open allows it, the water or air to flow straight through. The other valves, without mentioning too many names here, uh, these you defer it up and around. This is a much higher throughput, makes a phenomenal air cannon, really good quality. And that's the reason they've angled it, just so it flows. When the valve is open, it flows straight through. So we're going to put this back in. Put the spring back on top. And I'm going to show you how to remove flow control. If you look at this section over here, you have two gears. One gear, the white one, connects to the knurled knob on the outside. You can do this by hand as well. Okay, well, I'll show you what happens to the center uh, geared when you rotate this to the on position that black center gear extends itself forward in this direction and when you do that you stop the diaphragm from being pulled back all the way so it restricts it I'll bring it over here I'm just going to remove the spring to make it clearer if I can with it together this gear will stop that diaphragm from being pulled all the way back and that's all flow control is about. It stops the diaphragm from being pulled back all the way. So when you remove this gear 
you've removed your flow control. You have to wind it out to the end and it's out. Don't worry about the knob anymore. If your gear, your flow control gear, doesn't come out easily, it stays stuck in there a little bit, you could use a pair of needle nose pliers gently and pull it out. Remove it that way. When you activate this solenoid on the top that allows that diaphragm to pull back. It allows the water to go through. It doesn't pull back out of the housing, of course. It would stay near the top, but allows the flow to go right through. And then spring pushes it back, just like that. With this, inside the body of the, uh, the top solenoid housing, it would actually hold back that diaphragm being pulled back all the way. And that's all flow control does. What you have left is the knurled knob, which is sealed against water leak, and you're now missing the flow control part, which was that black gear, which is right here. So all we're going to do now is reassemble the, uh, the irrigation valve, and we're ready to go. Okay, put it back together the same way it came apart. You want the spring to be in the center. This is the part where you have to do up the screws manually. Do not use a power screwdriver in these screws or you'll destroy the housing. I'll go through and check to make sure these are tight. That's it. Your valve is now ready for use for your air cannon. It's just that easy.